Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be doing a teardown on the upcoming Chewy Lark box. Now they claim that this is the world's smallest 4K mini PC. And to tell you the truth, they might be right about this claim because this thing is absolutely tiny. I have done a review on it. I'll leave a link for that in the description. I do have a couple more videos coming up. But in this video, we're going to be doing a teardown. We're going to see how this thing's assembled. And I'm also going to be adding a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. Now this does come preloaded with Windows 10, 128 gigabytes of storage, 6 gigs of RAM, and the Intel Celeron J4115 CPU. But they have left us an open slot on this unit so we can install a 2242 M.2 SSD up to 1 terabyte. And I personally don't have a 1 terabyte drive, but I have a 512 gigabyte drive and this is going to allow me to install different operating systems that I wanted to test on the Lark box in the future. So let's go ahead and get right down to it. On the bottom of the Lark box, we have four smaller Phillips head screws, and these are actually surrounded by rubber feet. They protrude a little bit, so the rubber feet will hit your desk and it won't slide around. We're going to go ahead and get these out. And once we have those out, we can pull the bottom right off. And if we take a look inside of the Lark box itself, we have that M.2 slot. And this is going to allow me to add that 512 gigabyte SSD. And it's a 2242 SSD, so it's one of the smaller ones, and they do get quite expensive. But I'll save that for the reassembly because we need to get a little deeper in here. There's another four smaller Phillips head screws that we need to remove. I actually expected that to be a bit harder, but it just kind of falls right out. And one of my studs actually came out with the screw. Might not happen to you, but just keep an eye on that in case you think you're missing one. Now here, I'm going to call this the expansion board because there's actually two PCBs inside of the Lark box. And in order to remove this expansion board, we need to remove four studs. And it's only going to be three here because one already came out. So I have the studs removed, but we also have two little ribbon cable or quick connect ribbon cables here. I'm just going to pop those up, and from here the expansion board should pretty much just slide out. Now I'm calling this an expansion board, but I think the correct term for this would be an I.O. board because all of our I.O. is located on this PCB. We have our USB, our CMOS battery, our 3.5mm audio jack, SD card, and around back we have our M.2 and it just connects inside of this with two of those quick connect ribbon cables. But this is actually really cool the way they have this assembled. It's kind of a stack board configuration and it definitely works out for a small form factor like this. So the next thing we need to do is remove four more studs to get the main board out of here. And this board contains our internal storage, CPU, RAM, Wi-Fi chip, HDMI, and USB Type-C for power. With those removed, it's time to get to the main board. So in order to get to this board here, we're just going to remove the mid shell. And the whole shell on the Lark box is plastic. I would have loved to see an aluminum shell to kind of keep it a little cooler. But I know this plastic is a lot cheaper to produce. And here it is. Basically the bread and butter of this whole unit. We have the storage chip, our Wi-Fi chip, and we'll take a closer look at all of these. The ribbon cables to connect the I.O. board, HDMI. USB Type-C, and I believe this should pull right off, but I want to get this Wi-Fi antenna disconnected so I don't break anything. The Wi-Fi antenna kind of routes up to the top of the case. And we also have our fan connector, because yes, this is not passively cooled. We have a little fan in this unit. We also have our CPU, the J4115 and two RAM chips at three gigs each, which is really odd to see. You really don't see this much, but it's a total of six gigs of RAM and it is running in dual channel mode. And there's one last thing I need to get out of here and that is the heat sink and fan combination. Now, initially I wanted to install some thermal paste on this. I'm still gonna look into it, but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a gap between the heat sink and the CPU because we have a pretty thick thermal pad here. So if we tried to add thermal paste, it just wouldn't make contact. I'm going to remove the heat sink and fan combo here with these four smaller Phillips head screws. It is a copper heat sink with a fan attached to the top. And in the top of the case, you can see the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antenna. 
But as tiny heat sinks go, this looks pretty nice. It's all copper. We do have some copper fins and a blower fan to let the air escape the unit. It's a pretty hefty piece of copper for this CPU. This is definitely a bulk of the weight of the whole unit. So like I mentioned, I did want to add some high quality thermal paste, but I do not think it's going to be possible. The thermal pad they're using is pretty thick, and I know there's going to be a gap between the heat sink and the main board here. And if I just lay the heat sink on top of the board, we can actually see right through here. So the copper will not actually make contact with the CPU. So thermal paste will be useless here. We're going to have to stick with that thermal pad. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at all of these components. So from the left to the right, we have the heat sink, the main board, and the I.O. board. So we've taken a look at the heat sink, but I wanted to give you a closer look at these copper fins here. This is a blower style fan built in and it'll exhaust air out of the rear of the Lark box. Next up we have the main board. This is the main bread and butter of the Lark box. We have our built in eMMC storage, 128 gigabytes. We also have our Intel Wi-Fi chip, 802.11ac plus Bluetooth 5.0 built in. On the other side of the board we have our RAM, two 3 gig chips running in dual channel mode, bringing it up to a total of 6 gigs. It's LPDDR4 at 2133 megahertz. Plus on the same side here, we have the Intel Celeron J4115 CPU. And finally, the I.O. board with our M.2 slot dual USB 3.0 ports. Over on the other side, we have our CMOS battery, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. This does audio in and out, plus a micro SD card slot. In the end, I'm actually pretty impressed by what they were able to do here. I love the stackable board idea. We have that I.O. board and the main board, and they've put them like this so they could slide them into a smaller package. So all that's left to do here is reassemble the unit off camera, and I'm going to go ahead and install that M.2 drive. So definitely keep an eye on the channel because I do have a few more videos coming up on the Lark box. I'm going to be doing a full emulation test. I want to test out Manjaro Linux and possibly Android if anybody's interested, so let me know in the comments below. The box itself is on Kickstarter for about $155 up to $170 depending on what tier you choose. And I personally think that it is worth $150 if you're looking for a secondary or a supplemental PC that can run Windows 10 pretty well. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.